Welcome back! Today on Dialed In DIY, I'm hacking into this cool little portable Coca-Cola fridge. Yep, I'm gonna rip it apart for fun, education, and looking for a way to get parts for other projects. This fully electric refrigerator has no fluids, no compressor, and it is great for the car, on the go, or just about anywhere else. I'm also going to explain later in the video how I got a second one for free. Stick with me because you're going to get to see some really cool parts, and at the very end of the video, I'm going to explain a little bit of the science behind why this works as well as it does for the purpose it was intended for. To begin the deconstruction, all you have to do is flip this around to the backside where you'll find six screws that hold a cover across the backside of this, which covers up most of the PCBs and other working electronics. On the backside of the cover where the plug goes, there's a little bit of a sticker that kind of covers up the spot where the switch is. We need to get that out of there because that has a couple of screws underneath it. Those screws have to come out so we can take off the little PCB that has the switch. Now the only thing left connected to that outer shell is this fan. It's actually a really cool little 12 volt fan that works as the exhaust pulling off of this Mondo heatsink that's on the back. I'm going to take the two screws out of it and we're going to pull that off as well. On the back side of this heatsink is a Peltier module and that thing is amazing. We're going to talk more about that at the end of the video, but that is a key part that we want to salvage. There's one last PCB with a lot of great parts on it stuck to the back of the fridge, and there's a couple of screws holding that to the back of the case, so we're going to get those out of there and work our way back around to the front of the fridge. But before we can do that, there are four last screws in the back that we need to remove. Opening up the door, you're going to find this plastic piece that actually covers up the fan and the cooling side of the heatsink modules. Since we already pulled all the screws out of the back, all we have to do is grab this little heat sink, this great little piece of aluminum, and just pull straight out. Do note, it has a bunch of thermal paste on it, so be careful what you let it touch, because it's harder to clean that stuff up. Now I'm just removing the four screws that hold this last little fan in place. It actually works a lot like a blower to help disperse the cold air on the inside of the refrigerator. This is also a 12 volt fan. Because I want to keep the shell of the fridge intact for a different project, I'm clipping the wires on this fan so I can pull it on through. The only other way to get it out of there would have been to really damage the core case itself. Didn't want to do that. I'm gently prying out the faceplate covering the top controls, and then I'm going to go back and unscrew the little clear plastic cover that keeps the buttons in place. In an earlier picture, you might have noticed that the refrigerator had a nice blue glow on the inside, and that's accomplished by a little strip of LEDs that are up under the upper ridge of the door itself. Get this pulled down, and you can see that there's four blue LEDs connected right there. Plus, there's eight more flat blue LEDs on the PCB above. These are going to be great for future projects. The actual strip of four can be kept connected to the wires, but the other ones I'm going to desolder later. I powered up the fridge to show you the lights, but that also gives us a chance to get a temperature reading on the front of this Peltier module, and you'll notice it kicked up over 50 degrees hotter than its baseline temperature. I just wanted to go ahead and point that out because it doesn't seem completely intuitive that a refrigerator would intentionally create heat when you're trying to make things get cold, but in fact, that's exactly the way these work. I'll explain a little bit more about that at the end of the video. Oh yeah, the freebie. Well, it turns out the original one broke during warranty period, and the company sent me a replacement one, but didn't want the old one back. I ended up having the same problem with the second fridge, and that kind of bummed me out until I realized the problem was easy to fix. It was really just a power supply issue. I merely found a laptop power supply that met the demands of the refrigerator, and I'm back in business. These units work through thermoelectric cooling. This is basically a solid state heat pump. You run 12 volts through the Peltier module, one side's going to get really hot and the other side's going to get cold. The hot side connects to a heat sink and fan that pulls the hot air away, much like your computer does. On the flip side of this device, you've got a cold side that connects to another kind of a heat sink and has the cold air pulled to the inside by that blower. Moving the hot and cold air in opposite directions is what's called forced convection, and this works great for cooling, but you know what? You can also hook this up to a heat source and the Peltier module can actually generate power too. So there's another project I'm going to keep in mind. Since this fridge really isn't practical for long-term use, I'm salvaging the parts for future projects, so stay tuned. Thank you for taking the time to stop by Dialed In DIY and checking out my video. If you enjoyed what you saw, let me know with a thumbs up, and if you have the opportunity, subscribe while you're here too. 
I not only have a lot more dialed in project videos to come, but I also have a lot that I've already put out there, so please feel free to check out my playlists for other videos you might enjoy too.